HotWireFoamCutterInfo.com presents Power Supply Calculations. In this tutorial, we will be calculating the power supply requirements for an iChrome wire circuit that is placed in series. In order to calculate and estimate the requirements for your hot wire foam cutter power supply, you need to understand two basic laws of electricity. Joule's law describes that wattage is a function of the flowing electrical current and the applied voltage. Here, you can see that power equals current times voltage. Ohm's law describes that current is a function of the applied voltage in relation to the relative circuit resistance. Here, current equals voltage divided by resistance. With these laws, you only require two known variables and the application of algebra to calculate the third unknown value. This wheel describes the relationships, where the inner ring is the third unknown value and the outer ring is all of your known variables. For instance, in the bottom left-hand corner, you're solving for voltage. Applying the outer ring, you can see that voltage is equal to current times resistance, but voltage is also equal to power divided by current. Understanding these laws and reading this wheel is of the utmost importance when you attempt to calculate the requirements for your power supply. The first step is to determine the overall resistance of your hot wire foam cutter's nichrome circuit. If you already have your cutter built, Simply use a multimeter to test the resistance, which is measured in ohms. But if you're calculating by hand, please consider the following. The overall resistance of the nichrome wire circuit is a function of the wire's overall length and the wire's resistance per foot. In other words, total resistance is equal to wire length times ohms per foot. In this chart, which is also located on the website, you will find the relationship between wire gauge and resistance per foot. Values for both nichrome A and nichrome C are listed, but because nichrome C is most widely available, it will be referenced for the remainder of this video. As you can see, a large diameter wire, like 10 gauge nichrome C, has much less resistance per foot in comparison to a small diameter wire like 40 gauge nichrome. You'll notice that the 10 gauge is 0.06488 ohms per foot, whereas 40 gauge is well over 70 ohms per foot. There's a drastic difference between 40 gauge and 10 gauge nichrome wire. But all you should remember is that the larger the diameter, the lower the resistance. The smaller the diameter, the higher the resistance. Looking back at our equation, let's calculate the resistance for a 6-inch handheld cutter that uses 26-gauge nichrome wire. You will note that 26-gauge nichrome wire is 2.67 ohms per foot. Plugging these values into the equation, remember that wire length is measured in feet. As there are 12 inches in a foot, you need to divide any length measured in inches by 12 before multiplying it by the wire resistance. With simple math, we've estimated the total resistance of a 6-inch, 26-gauge handheld cutter to be approximately 1.34 ohms. Just remember that because there are other metal components in your actual handheld cutter, this estimate may be a little low, but it is fairly accurate. Once you have your circuit resistance, it is time to estimate the true power supply requirements. The required voltage from the power supply is a function of the desired wire temperature and the resistance of the nichrome wire. And the nichrome wire temperature is a direct result of electrical current flowing through the nichrome wire. Think of it this way. The electrical voltage is a pressure gradient that is trying to push electrons through the nichrome wire. The resistance is trying to prevent that flow of electrons, and the current is the actual flow of electrons through that wire. If you can generate a large amount of current, it will cause a large amount of friction with the nichrome wire as the electrons pass through, and that friction is dissipated as heat from your wire. So if we want to generate a known temperature from the nichrome wire with a known resistance, 
we have to apply a high enough electrical voltage gradient to force the electrons through the wire. You should then realize that voltage equals current times resistance. Check out this next diagram which is also available on the website. Because nichrome wire is predictable in its electrical properties, this diagram provides all of the required amperages for wire gauge and temperature. On the left hand side you'll see is listed the wire gauge, whereas the temperature is located across the top. The remaining values are the necessary amperage to generate the desired temperature within the associated wire gauge. Most foam products will cut around 600 degrees Fahrenheit or 316 degrees Celsius. Since our handheld cutter is using 26 gauge nichrome wire, you can follow the chart and see that it needs approximately 2.14 amps to generate 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Getting back to our equation, we will need to plug in the two known variables to calculate the required circuit voltage. Because the desired temperature is 600 degrees Fahrenheit, we will use the 2.14 amps. And from our previous calculations or measurements, we'll be plugging in the circuit resistance. With simple math, we've estimated the required power supply voltage to be 2.87 volts. Summarizing all the previous steps, we were able to determine that a 6 inch handheld cutter that uses 26 gauge nichrome wire has an estimated resistance of 1.34 ohms. With the desired temperature of 600 degrees Fahrenheit, 26 gauge nichrome wire requires 2.14 amps. In order to generate that level of current through that known resistance, we need to apply 2.87 volts to the nichrome wire circuit. But when it comes to choosing a power supply, the voltage and amperage are the two most important values. In understanding how power supplies work, you need to know that they list both voltage and amperage. The voltage on the power supply is a constant output electrical pressure that is being applied to the electrical circuit. The listed amperage is the maximum safe current output from the power supply. If you exceed this value and overdraw current from the power supply, you run the risk of damaging all the internal components. Now that you've done these calculations by hand, and you now know how these laws work together, check out this automated calculator supplied by Jacobs Online, who is a leading supplier of nichrome wire and custom power supplies. This calculator functions by you inputting three known variables and it calculates the fourth unknown variable, which is selected by the radio button. To quickly duplicate our previous calculations, we have selected the voltage as our unknown value. Using the length and guide sliders, we've selected 6 inches and 26 gauge nichrome wire. Along the bottom row, the calculator has estimated the total circuit resistance. Using the temperature slider, we've selected 600 degrees Fahrenheit, and along the bottom row, you'll notice that it provides the required power supply current. And lastly, the voltage requirement is calculated. You may notice a little difference in listed amperage and voltage from what we originally calculated, but that's perfectly okay. With these values in hand, on to choosing a power supply. But what if all you can find is a 5 volt power supply, or a 12 volt power supply? What type of temperature does that generate, and how does it affect our circuit? More importantly, how does it affect the power supply? Let's use this calculator and find out. Let's start by applying a 5 volt power supply to our handheld cutter. Change the radio button to the temperature slider. Because we know the length of our cutter, the gauge of our nichrome wire, and we know the voltage, this is the only other unknown variable. Next, be sure to change the voltage to 5. 
Using Ohm's law, the calculator generates 3.74 amps, which corresponds to almost 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a significant increase in temperature by what would have seemed to be an insignificant increase in voltage. If you had purchased a power supply that was labeled at 5 volts and 2 amps, it would quickly heat up and burn out. That is because the power supply is only rated to output 2 amps, but because you're applying a higher voltage than what you originally calculated for, the nichrome resistance is allowing a faster current to pass through the wire, and at close to 4 amps, it is way too much output for that 2 amp power supply. This is the exact reason why cell phone chargers burn up when you try to use them on hot wire foam cutters. To illustrate this point just a little bit further, look at what happens when you apply 12 volts to that same 6 inch handheld cutter. You're looking at over 2500 degrees and close to 9 amps, and that will surely burn up any cheap power supply that you can find. Because of the problems you just saw, this is why we recommend purchasing a variable voltage power supply. With a variable voltage power supply, you can start out at zero volts and gradually turn up the output voltage to meet your original calculations. In this example, I would typically recommend a power supply with no less than three rated amps. This would account for any fudge factor in our calculations. Also, a range of zero to eight volts should be sufficient to cover the ranges of temperatures required to cut most foam products but you can certainly feel free to choose a power supply that has a higher rated amperage if you want to achieve higher cutting temperatures. But all in all, that's it. Check out this calculator on our website or Jacobs Online. Just be sure to play around with it. It'll help you learn all the electrical properties for most foam cutters and nichrome wire. Thank you for watching and be sure to check us out at hotwirefoamcutterinfo.com.